Well, hello, everyone. It looks like we've reached um, a critical mass, so I think we'll begin. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Uh, on behalf of Aid Environment, Profundo, and Climate Advisors, uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar on the possible financial risk CAR4 faces from deforestation-linked beef sourcing in Brazil. My name is Ben Simons. I'm the Director of Communications at Climate Advisors. Uh, today, we are joined by Matt Piotrowski, a senior analyst at Climate Advisors, Tim Steinweg, consultant with Aid Environment, and Gerard Reich, equity analyst with Profundo. We will hear from each in turn as we uh, present the findings of our report. Before we get uh, started, though, a few quick pieces of information. Firstly, uh, please be advised that we are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing it on the Chain Reaction Research website for those who could not join us today, uh, and also for those who want to revisit some of the key elements of our discussions today. Um, secondly, following the presentations, we will have a question and answer session. Uh, to send us a question or to communicate with us during the webinar, please use the chat panel at the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll do our best to get to all questions uh, while keeping within the allotted time. Uh, so with those few bits of housekeeping out of the way, it is now my pleasure um, to ask Matt Piotrowski to uh, begin the webinar by uh, providing an overview of chain reaction research. Matt? Thanks, uh, Ben, and thanks to everybody for joining us. I am Matt Piotrowski, an analyst with Climate Advisors, one of the authors and ed editors of the report. Before we get started, I'd like to provide some background on chain reaction research. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, CRR, we are a consortium that includes Aid Environment, Profundo, and Climate Advisors. We provide free sustainability and financial analysis for investors and NGOs surrounding deforestation risks. This report provides a deep dive into French company Carrefour and its activity in Brazil. Aid Environment will discuss the sustainability analysis and then we'll move over to Profundo to provide the financial analysis. And with that, I'd like to uh, move it over to Tim Steinweg of Aid Environment, who will begin with his discussion on the sustainability analysis. Thank you very much, Matt, for this introduction. And thank you, everyone on the call, for taking the time to uh, listen to us uh, provide a little bit more information about the report that we published on Carrefour last week. Um, Matt, can I ask you to go back one slide, please? So before we go into detail on the findings of the report, just a little bit more context as to um, our choice of selection of this particular company. Um, this report is part of a broader project in which we look specifically at the deforestation risks in the beef supply chain in Brazil, uh, which is in addition to work that we do on palm oil uh, with a focus on Southeast Asia and soy uh, with a focus on Latin America as well. Um, we're looking at deforestation risks in the beef supply chain because cattle ranching is a major driver of deforestation, in particular in the Brazilian Amazon. Um, it has been said that up to 80% of Amazon deforestation can be attributed to the conversion of forest into pasture that is used for cattle rearing. Looking specifically at the supply chain of beef in Brazil, um, it's good to note that the large majority of the beef is consumed domestically, uh, while 19% uh, of beef is exported, and that makes Brazil one of the largest beef exporters in the world. Um, most of the products are consumed in country. Um, and within Brazil, large retailers, uh, those that operate supermarkets and hypermarkets, are a key channel um, to get beef products to the final consumers. 50% uh, of all food sales in Brazil come from supermarkets. Uh, while we do not have the exact figures at hand today, um, that figure will be similar for beef products. 
Uh, obviously, those retailers, those supermarkets will be, can be found throughout Brazil. Uh, it's important to note that uh, beef is sourced from slaughterhouses throughout Brazil uh, and not just from the slaughterhouses uh, that have the closest proximity to where the supermarket itself is. Um, that means that a lot of supermarkets throughout Brazil uh, will also feature products that originate from within the legal Amazon on their shelves. Um, and because of this supply chain, it means that large retailers may be exposed to deforestation risks uh, indirectly in their supply chain uh, as the slaughterhouses from which they source their products might in turn uh, slaughter cows that have been raised on recently deforested land. Um, Carrefour is among the largest retailers in the country. In fact, it is the biggest, um, which is uh, the primary reason why we chose this company. Next slide, please. So going into a little bit more detail on Carrefour as an introduction. Um, Carrefour SA is the France-based uh, retail multinational. It has operations in Brazil through Atacadao SA, uh, or also known as Grupo Carrefour Brazil. Uh, the uh, French uh, mother company holds a, holds a majority share. Uh, it is the largest retailer in Brazil. As of December uh, of last year, it operates 435 stores across uh, all states in Brazil, had a 14% market share and 15.4 billion US dollars in gross sales as of 2017. Um, Carrefour also operates 30 supermarkets located within the legal Amazon. Hi, um, I Tim, oh, I'm sorry to cut in. Could you just give a little more context about the legal Amazon? We have one question from the panel. Thanks. Sure. So the legal Amazon, as, can, as is illustrated by the picture on the slide, consists of nine Brazilian states uh, and is basically where the Amazon forest is located. So we've used this uh, administrative uh, boundaries uh, um, in our report. Uh, and I, I can explain briefly why. Um, because we, the 30 supermarkets located within the legal Amazon may be exposed to elevated risks as the system, uh, the licensing system through which slaughterhouses can supply their customers uh, are two tiered. Some slaughterhouses have licenses that allow them to sell their products across uh, state lines. Uh, whereas others are only allowed to sell within their states, which means that any supermarket located within the legal Amazon that sources from slaughterhouses might have a broader supply base, uh, which could translate into elevated deforestation risks. Um, Carrefour itself reports selling 24,000 tons of Brazilian beefs in its stores, uh, excluding uh, beef that might be found in processed food products. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. So um, to explain a bit further what Chain Reaction Research has done in order to assess Carrefour's deforestation risk exposure, um, basically what we did is we um, asked people to visit sto Carrefour operated stores uh, in five different cities throughout Brazil. Um, in total, they visited 48 stores uh, and we asked them to uh, register uh, the take photographs essentially of the labels that can be found on frozen beef products uh, in those stores. Uh, we took a sample of 10 products per store uh, leaving us with 480 samples of frozen beef products. Um, now these uh, product labels are useful because they contain information of the name and location of the slaughterhouse where it comes from. I think it's important to note here that we recognize that the figure of 480 uh, is not representative in a, in a scientific definition. Um, we do not claim that uh, our sample shows a picture of the entire Carrefour supply chain. Uh, it does help us to establish uh, um, evidence of, uh, of supply chain relations with individual slaughterhouses. 
Um, should also be noted, we, we only looked at frozen beef products. Um, we, the next step, once we identified these slaughterhouses, was to assess the risk profile of each of those slaughterhouses. Uh, we did that through a, a three-step process. First, we looked at whether that slaughterhouse is located within the legal Amazon, yes or no. Uh, if it was not located within the legal Amazon, we excluded it from further analysis. Um, but for those that were located within the legal Amazon, um, we looked at whether the owner of that slaughterhouse house, uh, signed a, an agreement with the Brazilian government. These are, called, these are um, um, often referred to as tax, TACs, uh, which is basically an agreement in which the slaughterhouse owner commits to address deforestation in its supply chain. Um, if a slaughterhouse owner has not signed such an agreement, uh, we consider that to be an elevated risk. Um, and then finally, we looked at the supply sheds of each of those slaughterhouses. Uh, and for that, we made use of a 2017 study by the Brazilian NGO Amazon, uh, who did a very extensive analysis um, to identify um, basically within what would be a reasonable area from which cows could originate that are slaughtered at certain facilities, to what extent there are embargoed areas, um, recently deforested land, uh, or land that may be at risk of um, deforestation in the near future. Um, so that step we, we relied on, uh, on studies by others. Uh, finally, we looked at the extent to which Carrefour uh, may mitigate these deforestation risks through a uh, uh, zero deforestation policy analysis. Um, important to note here that uh, this approach is similar to a report that we published in October of last year on one of uh, Carrefour's peers, uh, the Chile-based company Sencosud. Uh, next slide, please. So just to very briefly go through the results of this sampling, uh, out of the 480 samples that we took, uh, we found 168 products that can be traced back to slaughterhouses within the legal Amazon. Um, that's 35% of total. Of those 168 products, we found 31 samples that originated from uh, one and the same slaughterhouse that had not signed a tag. Um, however, this, uh, this facility was also featured in the Amazon study that actually concluded because of its geographic location, it had a very low deforestation risk. Uh, furthermore, we found 37 products uh, that did not originate from a slaughterhouse, but rather from a distribution company um, that then sourced from third party slaughterhouses. So in those cases, we see an additional link in Carrefour's supply chain, uh, which is important to note because that might reduce further visibility of the uh, associated deforestation risks. Um, we tried to, to get a little bit more information there and we reached out to the sourcing manager of that uh, distribution company. Um, and um, uh, anecdotally, they, that person indicated to us um, that Carrefour requires evidence of uh, legal licenses, uh, but not of any of those suppliers having signed tax. Um, again, in this case, we found that the um, slaughterhouses that we could identify being linked to this distribution company all had low deforestation risk profiles. Uh, and then finally, we found 11 products uh, that came from slaughterhouses that could be considered as high risk um, based on the Amazon study as well as some uh, additional anecdotal information. Uh, this includes seven products that originated from a JBS operated facility in Rondonia. Uh, most of those were found in, uh, in stores in Manaus. Um, and that facility was, uh, was uh, estimated to have around 600,000 hectares of uh, land with deforestation risk within its supply shed, um, as noted in the Amazon study. Uh, we also found three products from a Marfreak operated facility in Mato Grosso. 
um, which was also a facility that, that was uh, considered high risk uh, in the Amazon study uh, and also one that had uh, shortly closed down um, after the Carne Fria operation of the Brazilian government that was related to the sourcing of beef from illegally deforested land in Pará. Uh, we also found one product from a slaughterhouse operated by Mercurio Alimentos in Pará, uh, and the owner of that slaughterhouse um, had reportedly been accused of sourcing cattle from embargoed and illegally deforested areas uh, by Brazil's environmental agency, IBA. Uh, next slide, please, Matt. So then we looked at to what extent Carrefour mitigates these risks by assessing its uh, zero deforestation policy. Um, Carrefour has a commitment, a public commitment to eliminate deforestation from its products by 2020. Um, it has a forest policy uh, that explicitly includes Brazilian beef as one of the key raw materials uh, for implementation of that policy. Uh, it publicly states it, ha it has the aim to verify that 100% of its fresh Brazilian beef complies with its sustainability, sustainable sourcing criteria. Uh, these criteria aim to prevent deforestation, illegal labor, uh, and sourcing from embargoed areas or protected areas or indigenous lands. Um, now, we found the language around the scope of the policy to be somewhat ambiguous uh, with regards to uh, what products this policy actually applied to and whether that was limited to just the fresh beef products or also included the frozen beef products. Um, now Carrefour indicated to Chain Reaction Research after publication of the report that its policy focus also includes frozen beef products. Um, finally, we found that uh, there were no progress reports uh, publicly available to date or any list of suppliers, uh, which is something that we have seen other companies active in, in other uh, um, commodity value chains with high deforestation risks um, do. Um, uh, and in the same communication that we received from Carrefour, they did indicate that these will be included in its uh, 2019 sustainable development report. Uh, next slide, uh, please, Matt. So what does this all mean? Um, well, I think we can, uh, we can interpret this best by, by comparing it to the previous study that we did with Senko Sut. Um, and I think there's, there's some interesting comparisons to be made here. Uh, for one, we have found from a uh, nearly um, identical number of samples, we've found significantly higher uh, samples that originate from within the legal Amazon. I think this can mostly be explained by the fact that we also visited stores in Manaus in the legal Amazon, um, whereas Senkosut does not have any stores in that region. Um, however, we found almost three times as little samples from high-risk slaughterhouses as we did for Senkosut. So the 11 that I mentioned for Carrefour compared to 35 of such samples that we found for one of its peers. Uh, in addition to the fact that Carrefour does have a zero deforestation policy, where the Senko suit uh, does not. Um, now, if we interpret that in terms of uh, potential business risks coming from deforestation exposure, um, we think that any uh, reputational or other uh, business risks uh, that could potentially come from public benchmarks or other forms of peer comparison are therefore relatively low. Um, because they are, in a way, outperforming their peers. Uh, however, that being said, uh, the fact that we did find 11 samples uh, do, does mean, in our view, that there continues to be a risk um, that uh, Carrefour may not meet its 2020 target of eliminating deforestation from its supply chain, and that in and of itself could materialize into reputational risks. Um, therefore, we think that extra vigilance may be needed, uh, in particular for the high-risk supply chain relations that we identified here. Um, and with that, I'd like to pass it on to Gerard uh, for the financial analysis. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Tim. Um, 
Well, concerning this financial analysis, normally we use uh, uh, methodologies uh, like stranded uh, assets um, and market access risk and cost of capital as important ingredients to calculate, to value the risks for uh, the ESG risks. <clears throat> Concerning Carrefour, uh, Carrefour, we, uh, Carrefour Brazil might become might be impacted by civil society and con consumer campaigns, um, and uh, and but in this case we only focus on market access and financing risk because stranded asset risk is probably not applicable uh, to this uh, to this case. Uh, concerning uh, it's very important to take into account that um, uh, Carrefour Brazil is quite an important part of uh, of Carrefour SA uh, listed on the on the Euronext uh, stock exchange. Um, uh, Carrefour SA holds around 72% of the shares of Carrefour Brazil, and uh, if we would in in the consolidation uh, in the top line consolidation, uh, Carrefour Brazil is 17 17.17 percent of the total revenues, global revenues of Carrefour SA. So it's quite important. Uh, it's, uh, as you can see in the table, it's uh, uh, on a 2018 basis, it's 26 percent of EBITDA. It's, uh, it's uh, 51 percent of net profit. Uh, and looking to enterprise value, it's 35 percent. And um, in market cap, it's even more. Although I must say this is Based as if it is a 100% subsidiary, so uh, pro rata it is a bit uh, a bit lower. But uh, this is an important thing. Carrefour as a controls uh, 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 Carrefour Brazil, and in that way it's very much linked to the Brazilian uh, deforestation issue. Um, next slide, please. If you look to the to the market access risk, we can take uh, some examples from from history. But yeah, if 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 we have two assumptions, two percent and five percent revenue at risk because of this uh, this case, in case of a uh, civil society campaign, uh, then the total revenue that 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 Carrefour Brazil could could lose would be around 315 to 788 million. US dollars, and that would have an impact uh, looking to the cross margin that we have seen in the last five years of around 64 to uh, 161 million US dollars in both, uh, in both scenarios. In a DCF calculation, the market access risk uh, would amount to 450, to 1 point, 450 million to 1.1 uh, billion US dollar. And if we compare this amount to the uh, current uh, enterprise value, but uh, let's focus on the market cap, uh, uh, the market cap uh, uh, size, then this uh, DCF levels equals to 4% uh, in case of the 2% scenario of the Carrefour Brazil market cap, and 11% if we folk, if 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 we apply the 5% revenue at risk scenario. So it's not really a small in, uh, uh, impact. Uh, concerning the Carrefour SA, uh, the levels are of course a little bit lower, but still still material, three two to seven percent because of the fact that Carrefour SA uh, uh, is relatively dependent on what happens in uh, in Brazil. Uh, next slide, please. The financing risks. Uh, while the revenue uh, revenue at risk is quite a material impact, or could be a material impact, if nothing changes in the company, uh, the financing impacts are the financing risks are relatively relatively limited. Uh, this is uh, and the most of the risk is 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 uh, exists for. Carrefour SA, because Carrefour SA is uh, is the entity which has most which uh, which has the debt. Carrefour Brazil, in fact, has a net S position. So here, the problem of uh, cost of capital uh, risk is not really uh, not really there. Uh, 
Um, but if you look to, if you focus on Carrefour SA, which is also, of course, the entity with the zero deforestation policy, and if you look to the uh, crucial uh, ratio net debt EBITDA, uh, currently it's uh, in, in the 2018-19 scenario, 19 estimates, it is around 0 0.8, which is a relatively safe uh, level for a company. This has, uh, Carrefour SA has reduced this quite substantially in the last few years, but now currently it is relatively uh, safe. Everything which is below 2.5 for a consumer good company is, uh, is an okay level. Um, and if you would apply the 2% uh, market excess, um, or let's say the market loss, or the 5% market loss, then this ratio in both scenarios would increase to only 0.8 and 0.81, so that's a very small increase in the net debt EBITDA. So uh, from here on, this this is not leading to a more risky company if some clients are walking away from uh, Carrefour uh, Brazil. If you look to the shareholders base and the bondholders base, both of Carrefour Brazil and Carrefour SA, then uh, the, the, government, the, the Norwegian uh, government pension fund, they have a very small position in, um, in Carrefour Brazil, which is below 1%. Uh, remember that Carrefour SA has already 72% of, of Carrefour Brazil. And looking to the bonds, then we, 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 we see Deutsche Bank and BNP Paribas, which are bondholders with, let's say, the highest level of forest policies. Uh, but their uh, their investments are relatively small. If you combine the net debt EBITDA impact from uh, the loss, the potential loss of revenues because of deforestation, and if you combine that with the current uh, holders of debt and of uh, of equity, then in fact the cost of capital risk is relatively small for this company. Um, and uh, looking to the uh, to the to 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 the to, to the risk uh, categories, then uh, financing risk are relatively limited, and we can conclude that the revenue, uh, that the market access risk are much more material. Uh, uh, we have not yet uh, included here a reputation risk uh, calculation that is currently in development here at uh, at Chain Reaction Research. And looking to that, that might be much larger than these both other values. That is more, much more, more than more than 10%, which could be a reputation risk value. So uh, with that, I like to conclude the uh, the financial risk analysis and hand over to Matt for Q and A. Hi, thanks for That's great. We. We've received um, a few questions. Uh, so this is just also a reminder uh, to the attendees. If you'd like to send questions for the panelists, please use the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Uh, but to get things started, um, Tim, a couple questions in, in quick succession for you. Um, the first is, did you just look at tax um, or did you look at G4 or multilateral catalog agreements uh, as well? Um, we did basically what we what we the only distinction that we made was uh, is there some sort of commitment to address deforestation by the slaughter the, the companies that operate slaughterhouses uh, or not? Uh, we saw the absence of a tag to be an indicator that the company uh, doesn't really address deforestation. Um, Anyone that has signed the tech or the G4 obviously would fall in the category of the ones that, that um, at least have made some commitments. Great. Great. Thank you. Great. And then a follow up to that. Um, did the supply sheds only consider meatpackers direct uh, suppliers or uh, what about indirect suppliers? Right. So that's a, that's a very good question. Um, and it's some, it, it's somewhat difficult to answer because we are relying on secondary uh, research here. Um, we are aware that 
you know, there is uh, sometimes quite a long and complex indirect supply chain uh, of cows moving from one farm to the other before they end up in the slaughterhouse. I think everyone recognizes that's a major challenge in terms of effectively monitoring uh, supply chains and uh, deforestation risks. Um, we're basing it on, on the same methodology that Amazon used, which is essentially a, a, um, a mapping of what would be reasonably a supply shed from which these cows could enter um, the slaughterhouses. Great. Great. Thanks, Tim. And uh, now another question, which I'll throw open to, to the panel. Um, what is the ask here of Carrefour? Um, how should they avoid deforestation and what level of responsibility for checking should there be in light of recent TAC audits? Right, so I think that um, a reasonable ask would be to, um, um, to ask Carrefour to closely monitor, obviously, any land use change that might take place within the supply sheds of these high-risk uh, slaughterhouses. Uh, there are now various tools available to do this type of monitoring uh, in near real time. Um, and, and it could be an ask for Carrefour to do something similar and use that as the basis to open a meaningful engagement process uh, with the owners of these high risk uh, slaughterhouses um, to uh, basically signal this market demand for deforestation free products. Uh, and that could include um, an explicit willingness to suspend uh, sourcing relations in the case of ongoing violations or ongoing deforestation that such a slaughterhouse might be linked to. Great, thanks, Tim. And, and a, a related question, follow up to that. Um, how do you think the study should be used by investors? Uh, what sort of questions should investors be asking Carrefour? Um, I think it's very much related to the answer that I just gave. Um, I think it's the, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're getting really close to 2020. So, you know, I think everyone, including investors, including Carrefour and many other companies uh, have to step up now in order to either meet the 2020 deadlines or at least come as close as possible. Um, and I think that, that uh, the information provided in our report does give some pointers for very specific engagement questions uh, on specific high-risk uh, slaughterhouses uh, or more in generally, how, how does this engagement, um, what does it look like, uh, how is it conducted, uh, and how can, can Carrefour guarantee to its investors that such risks are properly mitigated? Excellent. Thank you. Um, now, now a question about incentives. Um, we have, um, and I'll open this to the panel as well. Does Carrefour have any incentives for farmers to take more action uh, to comply with the Brazilian Forest Code? Um, I'm not aware of any of those programs that might exist. I'm, I'm really not Sure, here. Um, I could follow up and then uh, come back to that question offline if that's useful. Great, thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, 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 now, a uh, question. Um, do you, th uh, did you think about your cross data with TAC audits um, to check if those meat packers that are uh, high risk are the same uh, as those that had worse worse reports in their audits? Um, that is a good question and is a consideration. Uh, we've not actively done that for this particular report. Um, there is one more company profile uh, that we are currently working on in which we will take this suggestion at heart. Great. Um, now, just keeping the, the train going, uh, you mentioned uh, reputational risk, uh, for example, um, uh, for sustainability conscious uh, or amongst sustainability conscious consumers. How much support for an eco label for deforestation free um, cattle uh, or, or beef, uh, how, how much support has this received from uh, Carrefour uh, and or its peers?
Um, also, a somewhat difficult question to answer. Um, let me follow up on that and, and address it offline if that's okay. That's great. Thanks, Tim. And now, um, keeping an eye on time, uh, we have one uh, final question for, for the panelists um, uh, before, I, before I open the floor for any final thoughts or words. Um, so, final question. Um, do you think the zero deforestation um, actions of meat producers uh, will change under the new presidential administration? Um, and related, are they uh, going to increase their sustainability agenda to keep good market uh, relations with their consumers? Um, I think it's an excellent question and one that obviously goes uh, far beyond uh, just Carrefour. Um, my personal opinion is that I think the, the role of the private sector um, actors that are in these commodity value chains is becoming more important. And it's becoming more important to take proactive measures uh, rather than uh, relying on government actions um, as there is obviously a clear risk that those might be uh, much more limited than they were in the past. Um, I think that you know there, there are these publicly made commitments uh, and you know um, a change in the uh, political environment does not mean that these companies will just you know uh, sit back and accept those changes but rather I think that now a, a an effective market demand a market ask for sustainable products uh, uh, yeah it's more needed than ever Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, and, and thanks to uh, Harard and Matt as well. Um, so unless uh, any of our panelists um, have any final words, um, it remains for me just to once again uh, thank, thank our panelists um, and thanks to everyone for joining us um, this morning or this afternoon or evening, depending where you're joining from us in the world. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in the uh, webinar, um, a recording of today's discussion um, will be available on the chain reaction research within the next few days. So if you'd like to revisit um, any of the elements, um, uh, that will be available and we can also send that out to the participant list. So thank you all. Um, and we, we look forward uh, to the next uh, chain reaction research webinar. Thank you, have a good day.